morning reptilians welcome and welcome back to my channel so this week we are doing a video that i have been meaning to do a, another one on for a little while now and that is just a top 10 list of beginner reptiles now a couple years back i did a top five beginner lizards and a top five beginner snakes video the reason i'm doing another one is because those tend to get lost over time and i get questions non-stop about what would be the best reptile for beginners. These animals are considered beginner animals because they are super easy to find. They are very inexpensive. Overall, they're easy to care for. But with that being said, I feel like it should be noted that just because you are new to the hobby doesn't mean that you should ever settle for an animal that you don't want just because it's marketed as a beginner animal. As long as you are willing to put in the time and effort and research that it takes to care for the animal that you want, then you'll be fine. I do want to throw in a disclaimer. None of the things that I am going to say are meant to be a care guide. I am just giving basic information about each animal, but if you are actually interested in getting any of these animals, please make sure to research and see exactly what it is that that specific animal needs. This week, we have a new sponsor that I am very excited about, and that is I Heart Geckos, who you guys know I've worked with before. So make sure to stay until the end of this video to find out all about this wonderful company and and how you can get a free feeding ledge with your purchase. Anyway, let's hop into this list. Number one on the list is, in my opinion, the easiest of the lizards, and that is the crested gecko. Crested geckos are so cool because they are small, so they require a smaller space. They are very easy to care for in terms of food. They are going to eat primarily a pre-made diet like Rapashi or Pangea, and they also are super cool to watch. Now, they are nocturnal, so if you want to watch these guys move and be active, you will have to stay up a little bit to watch that. They are very easy to find. They always have them at reptile shows. They are a bit more pricey at about $60, $65 for just a normal morph, but there are morphs to choose from. Another thing that makes these guys so easy is that they do not require any special lighting because they are nocturnal and they don't require supplemental heat usually. They do require higher humidity at 60 to 80%, but they are very low maintenance and they don't require a lot of, lot of space. A baby needs a 12 by 12 by 18 for an adult a 29 gallon on its side or an 18 by 18 by 24 inch tank is going to be perfect for them they also do have the capacity to drop their tails at will so if they feel scared they can just let it go and it does not grow back the gargle gecko is another option but we're just grouping that with the crested gecko because their care requirements are basically exactly the same except for gargle geckos can be a little more aggressive but if you're looking for something just like a crested gecko but you want something a little different a gargle gecko is going to be awesome and if they drop their tails they can regrow them Next up is the leopard gecko. Leopard geckos are another animal that is available anywhere and everywhere that reptiles are sold. There are so many different morphs of these guys because they have been kept in captivity for such a long time that those things are possible. In terms of lighting and heating these guys, they just need a hot spot of about 90 degrees and their humidity needs to stay pretty low. It doesn't need to go over 30, 40%. They are a crepuscular species. So in terms of UV lighting, it is highly dependent. I give mine UV lighting because if they were coming out in the dawn and dusk in the wild, then they would come into exposure of the sun, but that is up to you to decide. These guys live for 10 to 20 years and can live their entire adult life in a 20 gallon long. These guys are insectivores and they are very easy to handle. Make sure that you don't pull on their tail or overstress them out because they too can drop their tails. But other than that, they are super, super easy to handle and some some even seem to enjoy being handled. I know Percy seems to love being handled. She'll scratch at her tank for me to take her out, but a lot of them do seem to really enjoy that. Corn snakes. Again, in my opinion, corn snakes are probably the easiest of the snakes to care for. And this is true for most colubrids. They require very little <laughs> in terms of maintenance and caring for them. The minimum cage requirement is a 20 gallon long for an adult corn snake. I feel 
feel like that's too small, especially if your corn snake is super active, like many of them are. Mine is in a 40 gallon breeder, and I feel like that is currently a good size for him. These guys are burrowers, so they will need a loose substrate, but they don't like humidity. So things like Aspen, these guys need a hot spot, but it's not very hot. 80 to 85 degrees is enough for these guys to be able to properly thermoregulate, which is so crazy, but super cool. There are lots of different morphs to choose from with these guys, and they don't get huge. They get about four to six foot max, and they stay pretty small. Like they don't get super girthy like ball pythons here. This does mean though that you need to make sure that your enclosure is escape proof because they will look for holes in that enclosure and they will escape the moment that they can. They live for about 10 to 20 years and they just need a mouse or a rat every week and they are good to go. Corn snakes are super easy. Next up is the green anole. Green anoles, in my opinion, are super underrated. They are oftentimes used as a feeder for other snakes that may eat lizards. So they are very, very cheap. And because they are so cheap, people often just look at them and brush them aside. But these little guys are so cool. They are bright green and the males have a pink dewlap that they will pull down, especially when trying to attract a mate. They aren't the best for hand handling because they are pretty fragile, but you can handle them if they want. So they're not going to be the type that you can reach in and grab. But if you can get your anole to come out and perch on your hand, they are okay to handle as long as you're careful. These guys do need a very well ventilated tank. They are also arboreal and they are diurnal. So they are going to need a basking spot and a UV lamp. They're diurnal. So they're going to be super active during the day. So you can actually watch them during the day. They live for about five to six years and they are insectivores meaning that they only eat insects there have been many times that people have kept communities of these guys together just make sure that if that is something that you are interested in you understand that males are not to be kept together ever and if you are going to keep females together make sure to do a bunch of research on that and also make sure that you understand that if a fight were to break out or if they are not getting along that you are going to have to house them separately but just another thing, it seems like a lot of people successfully keep groups of these together. Next up, we have the rosy boa. If you are looking for a snake that is a little bit heavier in the hand to handle, as opposed to something like a corn snake, then rosy boas are awesome. Rosy boas are not gonna be as easy to find, but when you do find them, as long as they're just like a normal type morph, usually they're pretty cheap. Even though most people think of huge snakes when they hear the term boa, these guys stay pretty small. They only are gonna get about two to four feet, which means that they don't need a huge enclosure either. A 10 to 20 gallon tank with about a 90 degree hotspot is going to be perfect for a rosy boa. These guys will live for up to 30 years, so make sure to keep that in mind if that is something that you are interested in. They are going to live a long time, but they don't require high humidity, so that always makes the maintenance for these guys much easier. As with most snakes, they are going to eat mice or rats, and they do tend to have a pretty high feeding response, so make sure you are being careful when you are taking them out of the tank but once they are out it should be fine just keep that in mind and speaking of super small boas we have the kenyan sand boa maxing out at only about two and a half feet the kenyan sand boa is another one that's not going to be the easiest to find but i've seen them at a vast majority of reptile shows and when they do have them the normal type morph is always pretty inexpensive these guys are perfect for someone wanting a snake who doesn't have a lot of room because because they are also going to live comfortably in a 10 to 20 gallon tank their entire lives. Kenyan sand boas also have a pretty good temperament. They can be a little hard to get out because they will spend a lot of their time burrowed under the substrate, but once they're out, they're usually pretty docile. They also need a lower humidity at about 30 to 40% max, but they also don't need any kind of special lighting, which is awesome. These boas are very cool, very easy to maintain, especially if you are wanting your first snake, but you don't want the same thing everyone else has and you don't have a lot of space this guy may be perfect for you 
the fire skink fire skinks are such awesome lizards i had one about a year maybe two years ago now as a baby she did unfortunately pass but her issue was not related to them or how easy they are as animals in general captive bred fire skinks are going to be kind of hard to come by so if this is something that you want and you don't want to go the wild caught route once you find one they are wonderful they are diurnal creatures so they are very active during the day. They will bask and burrow and they will climb. They are so cool. They are insectivores, so they are going to eat primarily insects and they are a humidity loving reptile. So their humidity needs to be at about 60 to 70%. They will also need a basking spot in the mid nineties and a UV light because they are a diurnal creature. The minimum tank requirement for these guys is going to be a 20 gallon long, but it is recommended that you do upgrade to a 40 gallon breeder once that fire skink has become an adult. They do live for about 20 years so make sure to keep that in mind. These guys are very highly recommended if you are wanting to get into the hobby but want something a little different than what everyone else has this is probably the way to go day geckos this is another one that not everyone is going to have and this is another one that like the anole once they're set up then they're basically good to go they're not going to be one that you are going to be able to handle but they are beautiful and their setups can be beautiful these are a humidity loving reptile so bioactive setups are going to be wonderful for these guys specifically we're going to look at the gold dust day gecko because they stay pretty small they can live their entire lives in an 18 by 18 by 24 which is awesome they are low maintenance because again you're not going to really be able to handle them they will need uv lighting and a hot spot in the 90s the interesting thing about these guys are they are really bright and beautiful but if something is off with your lights they will start to dull out which is a good indicator that you probably need to fix the heat or switch out uv lights or something like that which i thought that was very interesting again Again, these guys are not for handling they are going to be more of a set it up and admire the work and the beautiful animal inside of it sort of thing but if that's what you're looking for this may be the route you want to take ball pythons now this is one that is super iffy and super debated as to whether or not they are beginner reptiles i am putting them in the beginner reptile list for a couple of different reasons number one their temperament and handleability this is the second video that i have shot with sterling here and he is fine he is enjoying being out of his tank they actually will handle being handled very well they also are available Available everywhere you can get ball pythons from pet store or reptile show or Craigslist Facebook anywhere and everywhere and the amount of morphs available for these guys is insane they are nocturnal so that means they also don't need any kind of special lights they will need a hot spot I use a heat pad to do that of about 90 degrees and they do also require humidity they like to stay at about 60 to 70 percent humidity normally but when they are shedding that does need to be boosted or they need to have some kind of humid hide. A couple of reasons that these guys are debated on whether or not they are for beginners is number one because of that humidity and number two these guys will go on hunger strikes so they may be eating and eating and eating and then for two straight months decide that they don't want to eat. That is very stressful for you as the keeper because you don't know if something is wrong. You are having to throw out rodents over and over and over again and wasting that money over and over again. It becomes very stressful very quickly especially if you've never dealt with ball pythons before one of the biggest positive key points for me other than this temperament for beginners having ball pythons is the fact that most of the time as opposed to striking they opt to just hide or ball up in a ball hence the name ball python so if you are just now getting into snakes and maybe you're not very comfortable with snakes like i wasn't then these guys are going to be wonderful to ease you into that Last on the list is the Russian tortoise. Now on all of my other lists, I made sure not to put tortoises because tortoises generally live for a very, very, very long time or get very, very big or both. But I know a few of you really wanted to know what would be good for beginners. Russian tortoises are super easy to find and they are relatively inexpensive at about $50, $60. A vast majority of these guys are going to be wild caught tortoises. So if that is something that 
that you are not okay with, make sure to keep that in mind. These guys do stay small though, and that is one of the biggest things that I was looking for in beginner tortoises. These guys stay at about eight to 10 inches, and they are pretty active and very active eaters. So hand feeding these guys is going to be a fun activity for you. A two foot by four foot pin for them is going to be minimum with loose substrate so that they can burrow. But the cool thing about tortoises is that in the summertime or if it is warm outside, you can keep them outside as long as you give them the ability to burrow to get away from the heat. So that means that you can have an indoor and outdoor enclosure for your tortoise. Ambient temperature for these guys is going to be room temperature, but they will need a hot spot in the mid 90s. They will also need UV lighting because they are a diurnal creature. And the big thing here is to keep in mind that these guys can live for well over 40 years. And their diet, super easy like most tortoises, is going to be veggies. They need a wide variety of different ones to make sure that they are getting all of their vitamins. And you can even plant some plants that are safe for them to eat in their enclosures and they'll kind of munch on those from time to time as well. But yeah, if you're looking for a tortoise that stays pretty small, a Russian tortoise is going to be wonderful for you. And of course we have a few honorable mentions. Number one, and the one that people are probably looking for on this list is the bearded dragon. I have said over and over that I don't think that bearded dragons are necessarily beginner pets because they aren't as easy as people think that they are. So if you were to walk into a pet store and grab a $35 bearded dragon, generally your thought process isn't on how incredibly expensive that animal is going to be. And bearded dragons are incredibly expensive to set up and feed, especially as babies. But bearded dragons need a 40 gallon breeder. They have to have linear UV lighting that covers 75 to 100% of that tank. And the light has to be replaced every six months. In addition, they are going to need a pretty hot hot spot in the mid nineties. And as babies, even hotter, baby bearded dragons have an awesome temperament. They generally aren't an animal that you have to handle down, which is super, super awesome. Especially again, if you are just getting into the hot However, a baby bearded dragon can easily put away a hundred crickets a day. That adds up very quickly. In addition, bearded dragons are very parasite prone, meaning that at some point in having your bearded dragon, you may have to take them to the vet to get tested and or treated for parasites. Another added cost that you don't really think of when you buy a $30 animal. For the most part though, once they are set up, then usually they are good to go. And if you know all of this going into it, then 1000% yes, a bearded dragon is going to be a good beginner animal for you. Next honorable mention is the blue tongue skink. Blue tongue skinks, depending on what species of them you get, have different care requirements. Some are humid and some are dry and require a lot of the same things that a bearded dragon requires. The reason that they are not on the list and they're just an honorable mention is because they are hard to come by and they are expensive. So you are searching and searching and searching for a blue tongue skink and once you finally find one you're looking at 350 400 and even up into the thousands of dollars if you're looking for a specific more they need a 40 gallon breeder minimum they need uv lighting they need a hot spot in the mid 90s they're going to need loose substrate because they like to burrow but once all that is set up usually they're good to go and they have a pretty good temperament they are more active than bearded dragons for the most part they also need a super varied diet like bearded dragons and this can be accomplished a few different ways if you know all that stuff going into it then blue tongue skinks are awesome for beginners and lastly because i wanted to put another one of these on the list is the herman's tortoise not on the original list because super hard to find super expensive but they are another tortoise that is going to stay relatively small at about six to eight inches max now these guys are going to live for over 50 years three foot by two foot is the minimum indoor enclosure for these guys and they will will also need substrate. Just like the Russian tortoise again, these guys can be kept outside. Just make sure that they are not overheating out there, but you can put a pin for them outside and they will love it. Other than the substrate, tank setup for these guys is also going to require a UV light and a heat light from about 95 to 100 degrees. If that is an animal that you were looking into, make sure to definitely do the research on that to make sure that you are providing the best home for your animal. 
But that is it. This was a long video and now I remember why I split up top five lizards and top five snakes last time. But hopefully it was helpful, especially if you are looking into getting your very first reptile and don't know where to start. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos makes awesome conversion kits for geckos or arboreal creatures. And what those allow you to do is turn a tank that you may not be using. It allows you to turn that up on its side and you stick the conversion kit in with some silicone and you have a front opening ventilated enclosure for an arboreal creature like crested geckos, which is so awesome. I use this in Goliath's tank. I've been using it for over a year now and it is still just like I set it up yesterday. It's wonderful. They also have things like feeding ledges and breeding boxes, humid hides for geckos, which is awesome. Make sure if you are interested in those, you head on over to iheartgeckos.com and I will also leave their link down below and make sure to use my code here and you can get a free feeding ledge with your purchase, which is awesome. Thank you so much to iheartgeckos for sponsoring this video. One more time, disclaimer, make sure that if you are wanting to get one of these animals, you do more research than just this video. As always, guys, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday. Huge shout out to Shavis Terry for following me on Instagram and going through and liking all of stuff. Thank you so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. That is everything. Thank you for your videos and the care you put into them. I'm a fan. As I was watching one of your reptile videos, I got inspired. I drew a picture of you. I hope you enjoyed as much as I do your videos. Thank you so much, Marshall. Thanks and keep on reptilizing. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. This is gonna go right here. I'm gonna replace right my turtle. Yeah, we don't need we don't need that turtle. <laughs> Sitting right there. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I love it so much. Thank you.